Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials. Today we're going to look at all automation writing modes. So let's get straight to it. So far, we've talked about editing different envelope lanes. And editing envelopes is really good for when your project is stopped and you kind of know what you want to do. Once you start playing or recording, you need to tell Reaper what you want it to do to your automation. And there's really two things Reaper can do to your automation. It can read it or it can write it. So all tracks on Reaper are by default set to trim read mode. But if I right click here, I see all these different automation writing modes. We'll get to what trim read does but there's all these other automation modes so there's read there's touch latch latch preview and write by the way i don't like menu diving i don't like reading through these texts it's a little confusing for me so i have this little toolbar over here and this toolbar basically just sets my automation modes with one click so i can click on these two i can put them in read or i can put them in touch so let's start with read so if i set my track and read it will just read automation so if i play the song from here you can see my fader going up you will see that my fader is moving. So it's just reading and it's not writing anything. So if I grab this knob and I move it around, not making any changes. And as soon as I let go, it will snap back to the original value. Normally, if you have automation written and you're in trim read mode, it is reading those things, but it's not showing you what they're doing. So if you do like to see your faders moving, you can put things in read mode. If you're more comfortable with that, you can see your faders and knobs moving. So if that works for you, put it there. Also, when I'm done with a mix, I'm not touching anything anymore. More, I put tracks to read and read is kind of like a lock mode as well because whatever you accidentally touch or change won't be written on your envelopes your envelopes are just being read and their changes are shown in real time so that's read mode let's now get to write mode so let's set this track to write so writing just writes automation it doesn't read it it doesn't care what's in the envelope lane so you can also look at it as an overwrite mode if I play my project you can see that it's writing over all these values. It doesn't care what the value is, it just cares what value is here. Now, if I change this, it will write that change. If I let go, it'll keep writing that change and it's just waiting for my command. So write mode can be very dangerous because let's say I'm in write mode here and I have my level set and I'm happy with it. And let's say I'm now working on my track echo. So if I start playing, whoops, as you can see, this has been written over there. So that can be really dangerous if you're not careful. It can be really tricky and very risky to use write mode. There is a preference for that. If you go to automation, I like to have after recording automation in write mode on repeat six stop you can remain in write mode or you can switch to trim read mode so if i'm ever in write mode make some changes press stop it'll go immediately to trim read mode so that way i'm not accidentally overwriting anything so that's just my preference the write mode can be really useful for when you're trying to write complex automation on a plugin for example so i have this echo on my piano track it's just a solo piano performance and it's just giving it a little bit of space and like psychedelicness right and let's say in the end i want to like really amp that up i can choose this track i can go to write mode and the cool thing is as soon as i click on any parameter it's automatically added here so i don't have to to click on it and then go to param and go to show track envelope right so once i have these values here i can already get out of write mode and manually write them in but let's just write some automation So let's say I did all of that and I'm happy with that. Or if I want, I can come and like edit these a little bit, smooth out some of these lines if I want, maybe get rid of this one. So write mode is good for just writing things like complex automation. So that's write mode. Now let's look at all the other stuff. So trim read mode is just like read. It's reading your automation, but at any point you can adjust the overall height of the envelope. So I got this volume and when I'm in trim mode and I play it, my fader doesn't move. It's because my fader is no longer controlling this lane. It's controlling a trim envelope. Plane. I have this automation style, it's going up and it's going down, but if I want, I can take 12 dB off of the whole thing. It's still reading all of this stuff, it's still making those adjustments, but now my extra 12 dB has been written on top of it as well. All that stuff is written on the trim envelope. So if I toggle track trim envelope visible, you see this extra lane. There's the volume automation, and then whatever I write in trim automation is then added or subtracted from that volume automation. So if I'm happy with the shape of my envelope, but I want to bring it down, I can just bring it down a little bit here. And then what I can do, for example, is I can go apply 
apply trim envelope to volume envelope, clear trim envelope. So if I hit it, now all this stuff is written on. And again, I get my fader back so I can then start writing it or whatever. So that's trim read mode. And that's why your faders and knobs don't move because you can always just kind of trim what you have. So you're not losing any of the automation that you've written, but you can add or subtract from the overall amount of it. So kind of like trimming the hedges, right? You know, those kind of elaborate hedges, you know, shape into a horse. When it starts growing, they just trim it. The overall shape is preserved. We're just kind of shortening it a little. So what touch does is touch reads your automation until you touch something, then it starts writing until you let go, then it goes back to reading. So if I play while my track is in touch mode, nothing's happening, it's just reading. As soon as I start moving this fader, it starts writing, but it's preserving one point at the end. So at any point I let go, it just goes back to reading that information again. I touch it again, it starts writing, I let go, it goes back to reading. So this is useful for, for example, when you're happy with the overall level of the track, but you do want to just finish it just a little bit. So let's say I'm happy with the overall level of this track here. So what I can do is play it. I want to get that one note a little louder. There we go. Bring it down. As soon as I drop it, it lets go. As soon as I start writing, it goes back to writing. So cool. Now let's put the same track in latch mode. So latch mode is again reading the automation until you touch something. And then once you touch something, it stops reading that envelope and it just begins to write on it. So with touch, as soon as we let go of our fader or knob, it went back to reading. But with latch, it doesn't go back to reading until you stop. So it's reading, reading, reading as soon as i touch this it'll start writing and it won't stop even if i you know now if, now i can go move something else but that envelope is still being written now i let go of that one that one is also just being written so that's latch. So it's a matter of preference whether you prefer touch or latch. So latch preview definitely deserves its own episode. So I'm gonna cover that tomorrow. It's a really powerful tool once you know how to use it and once you wrap your head around it. There's also some extra command that comes with using it. So we're gonna cover that tomorrow, but I'll quickly tell you what it does. When you play the track and it's in latch preview, it starts reading your automation until you touch something. When you touch something, it stops reading it, but it's not overwriting on it either. It's just letting you temporarily audition whatever you want so as i play this track it's reading my automation no problem as soon as i touch it it's no longer reading this automation but it's not overriding it it's just letting me get a feel of the level so we'll do an episode on that tomorrow i've also prepared this cheat sheet for all the automation writing modes so you can take a screenshot of this or you can download it as a pdf on my website also on my website i have made all the custom actions that i showed you in the first 20 episodes of rapid fire tutorials available thank you for being with me for the first 20 can't wait to show you guys more i also have my sound design work and my music there if you're interested so go check out my website link will be in the description see you tomorrow bye